And just let the energy in your body come from the top into the center and then down your legs and into the floor. And feel the floor beneath your feet, our beautiful Gaia here in Boulder, Colorado, supporting you, supporting us, this event. Supporting your heart like a beautiful foundation from the bottom up and feel her energy coming up through your feet and just making a field of love around your heart center, caressing you from the inside, saying hello, saying yes, saying you are loved. And just let yourself relax into that love Mm. knowing it's always there. And then from the inside to the outside, feel the energy in the room and how it's shifted and changed just in the brief time we've been in here this morning. And that's a reflection of you and a reflection of the entourage of Kryon here to honor you, to honor your experience, your humanity, and your journey. Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. There's always a brief pause. My partner and all that is in that which is human steps aside, literally, as much as possible to allow me to speak as I do. And yet at the same time, the language has to be used, the intellect has to be used, all of the things that the human has learned and is about, is present, and yet that which is my partner, that you know as the personality, is not. He steps aside. It has taken years for him to know and learn to do this, for there was fear. And the fear was about change, it was about the loss of control, it was about perception, all of the things that we're teaching today. Dear ones, this weekend is about perception. Not just your perception of what might be happening in this chair. Do you believe it or not? Is it the man speaking or not? But the perception of your reality, of what might be happening in your life, what might be happening on the planet, because all of these perceptions are based upon only what you know. Only on what you know. When my partner came into this planet, all he wanted to do is what he ended up doing. His logic was everything. The hermit in him was alive and well and shaped what he did and why he did it. His social interactions based upon his karmic attributes, all that you are, he was. For the reasons you are you, he was him. And none of that included any kind of spiritual recognition or attributes that there was anything more than the beauty of science and the logic of it all. That was his world and his joy. It was his music. And when he started to see those who had another kind of music, and when he started to see those who had their own system 
of self-worth and belief that revolved around intangible things that couldn't be proved, that seemed to be outside of a reality almost to insanity. He rejected it. It wasn't real. In fact, there then is the judgment, is there not? The judgment that says, I'm sorry for you that your mind has gone in that direction. Because you do understand you live in a land that is not real. You live in a world and you're hanging on to things that don't exist. Show me the logic. Show me the proof. Give me the science behind why you have joy on something you can't see. The reasoning here and the where I'm going with this is logical. And you're going to hear it in the message I'm going to give you tonight. And I'm going to say it again and again. A fool does not know they're a fool. You don't know what you don't know. If you have not experienced something, you don't know anything about it, really. You only have the perception of what you've been told, of what your instructors have said, or your parents have said, or the people who you love have said. And those are the things that you paste upon yourself that become you. So therefore, there may be things there, but they're outside of the box that is comfortable for you, that you survive in. This weekend, I want you to dissolve the box. I know who is here, and in the most loving way, I say I know who is here because you were all, all part of the creative source, all. Inside of each one of you is what we would call the creator. That which you call God, if you wish, is in you. Your DNA is complicated chemically and extremely profoundly complicated esoterically. There are things in your DNA that you cannot see, you cannot measure with the elementary ways that you measure things today. Imagine, imagine a society that can't even measure physics correctly. Imagine. You're so proud of it. You don't even have anything that can see a quantum field. Imagine. In your DNA is a quantumness that is so profound, so beautiful. In that what you would call your Merkaba. There are patterns that will reveal God inside you. Medical intuitives, readers can see it, a piece of it, a portion of it. And they can look at you and some of them will see God in you. Some of them are speechless and you walk around having no idea. No idea. You see, I know who you are. My partner keeps his eyes shut. Because those few times he's opened them, he got to see what I see, and it was not comfortable at all. What I'm saying is you don't know it. You haven't been there. There's been no proof. I know who's here. I know who doubts in the room that this is real as I speak. I know who's who's come to see the science and not the esoteric. Family, let me tell you something. The box that you think is real for these two days can be dissolved. And if you want to, you can put it right back when you leave. There's no judgment. If you'll allow things you don't believe and were never taught to be put forward examined logically today you'll say oh maybe just maybe 
There's physics that I don't know about. There's energy I don't know about. There are cycles that I didn't know about. There are things I have never, ever been taught. Could it be? The entire planet sits in the beginning of a cycle. Some of you know it. Some of you feel it. Let me tell you something. You're done recalibrating. Now you go to work. This is the year of the three. A catalytic year where a catalyst is that which energies profoundly affect and develop other energies, if you'll allow it. But cyclically, it's a, it's a nine. And that is to say that the cycle is complete. A new one is beginning. We're going to tell you more about that later. But the light worker in the room who is aware that they are indeed a piece of the Creator, know that something is up. It starts now. Things are coming to a close which you wanted to come to a close. Now I'm speaking to 17 people in this room who needed to hear that about your health. I know who's here. Aren't you done with it yet? You prayed for it. You've asked for it. You've given affirmations for it. And I'm asking you right now, aren't you done with it yet? And the answer is, oh yeah. In other words, there is the potential this weekend. The word is potential, and I want you to listen carefully to that word because that's going to be on your lips when you leave on Sunday night. There's the potential in here for profound healing. A closure of an older energy in a body that doesn't need it in this energy. No matter what your DNA was, it doesn't have to be that way. No matter what your predispositions for disease were, they don't have to be it now. It is a new energy that is so profound for those who are awakening to who they really might be that they can change everything. I'll cry and you don't understand. You see, my mother had it, and then her mother had it, and her mother had it, so therefore, therefore. Therefore what? You're in a prison of your own belief, right? And now you've got it. You know who I'm talking to. I'm talking to everyone here, but specifically a few. There is no predisposition for disease that cannot be overcome with a predisposition for love and joy and change. Did you hear that? You are now in a position where changing your reality will be common daily. Get to work. Well, I'm too old to write a book. I'm too old to be a teacher. <laughs> oh, listen. The seniors in the room, they know what I'm talking about. The very fact that you've lived this long on the planet gives you an advantage. You know you've been there and you've done that. And you know that the joy that you spread as you walk, no matter how old you are, stays where you walked. The very footprints. You spread what you have through the compassion that you give. Through the understanding of who you are through the honoring of those who've been before, through the ancients and the ancestors, it all comes alive. And you realize that there's so much there that never was there before. And that awareness is catchy. People start asking you, what have you got? You're peaceful. There's nobody around me is peaceful, they say. Everyone's upset. Have you noticed? Turn on the TV. Everybody's upset. What kind of society would give you entertainment programs of upset people? <laughs> so you can watch others be upset to make you feel really good about being upset yourself. <laughs> mm. 
it should smack you in the face as being inappropriate old energy. And it is. And it's not going to be the way of the future. Not at all. And that's what the teaching is today and tomorrow. The cycles of the planet, the cycles of life, the cycles of youth are upon you. And with a society of humanism of free choice, you can ignore it, reject it, and go just with what you know. You can be as my partner was most of his life until his mid-40s. Or are you so proud to stand up and say, what I've experienced must be everything there is. And I will not go anywhere past that which I know is true and real. And everything beyond it is foolishness. And now he's a fool. <laughs> As he sits in the chair and I come through him. And he lets me tell you the things that are saturated with compassion and love. And a reality that we're inviting you to see beyond your box. That is the message of today. Enjoy your break. And so it is. And just staying in that place of deep resonance. Feeling the time of no time and the space of no space. your molecules softening, receiving, allowing, in inviting, feeling that deep peace that comes with the resonance of the sound it comes with the resonance in the room of each one, each open heart, each open soul, each being here on purpose to receive, to give, to adventure together, to meet to be the love, the love on the inside, the love from the outside, the love that he gives each of us, the doorway to the all that is, the vast expanse, receiving us always, in our most perfect form, receiving us and welcoming us with the deep love of the divine, the deep limitless love that knows us. And we know that love, we say yes to that love. Allow yourself just to float into the arms and the heart of that limitless love. Feeling it embrace you. Giving to your receiving, receiving to your giving, to your gratitude. And from that place of peace and expansion, from that beautiful place of the light of the all that is and the love of the all that is, we give our hearts and our gratitude 
to the energy of this day and the energy around us now as we receive the loving message of Kriya. Greetings, dear ones. I'm Kryon of Magnetic Service. In the last years, in the last months, we have been telling you about shift and change. We've given you concepts that are new and have not been here before. Esoteric information. We've given you about that which we call the Akash. We've told you that that which you learn in this lifetime will be carried to the next and you will awaken with the wisdom and the knowledge of it. We've told you this, that the cycle of life itself is shifting and changing. That you will awaken differently next time than you woke this time. We told you that the earth is in a different place in space. That the energies that the earth will experience will enhance the heliosphere. That the sun will change its energy, which in turn will change that which is magnetics of the planet. You will awaken in the soup of magnetics, which tempers your consciousness in an allowance of new things. Shift. But all through that, there's confusion. This morning we said the words, you don't know what you don't know. A fool does not know he's a fool. Because there has been no higher experience than that which you've had. When you speak of cycles, dear ones, there is an assumption, even in science, that the cycles that you go through will be the same. And whether you are applying these things to the weather, to economics, or whatever, you have that idea that the cycle will be the same. In physics, it is. Anything in a cycle repeats itself in the cycle. When you look at that which is sound, when you look at that which is vibration in the air, when you deal with cycles of things, you see the same cycle repeated and repeated and repeated. But dear ones, what makes this different is that the cycles that you are studying, the cycles that you are claiming, and that the ancients talk to you about, the very energy you sit in in 2016 is not guaranteed to be a repeated cycle at all. Oh, it's a cycle. But you've got choice you never had before. Choice you never had before. A higher vibrational consciousness is available in the toolkit of those who are awakening to wisdom. Wisdom that has not been here before. Wisdom that is not just in the light worker wisdom that is the common man and woman a wisdom that is actually already happening on the planet a wisdom that is preparing itself for 2016 now let us review what we've said about 2016 in this the second channel of this year we do a review for a moment we said this morning that numerologically you're looking at a catalytic year 
But in that which is cyclical, that which the stars will tell you, when you look upon them, that which you would study on the planet, which is the cycles. 2016 is more, much more. It is the energy of the nine. It is a completion year. The completion of many cycles together. The teacher Greg has brought this to you, has showed you the science, and has actually opened the door for me to say these things that I'm saying to you now. The cycle can be different. And that's what I want to speak on right now, just for a moment or two. When you don't know what you don't know, if you've never done it before, it can appear to be one thing when it's another. If all you've known at the end of certain cycles and the beginning of others is confusion, or fear, or darkness, there will be those who will say, well, here it comes again. The darkness, the doom. And then there will be those who sense and feel it's different. Oh, it's the cycle. Oh, there is that which occurred before, but does not have to occur again. Some years ago, I prompted my partner to put out that which is the information on the new children. More than 10 years ago, notice it, it was that the children are different. The consciousness is different. Mothers who are seniors in this room or next to seniors in this room, their grandchildren and their great-grandchildren are different than their children were. There is more wisdom. There is a difference in countenance. They think differently. It has already begun, dear ones. When you look at dispensations of energy, they do not happen in an hour. <laughs> they don't happen in a year. They take generations. And dear ones, if the potentials of shift are there, they'll begin. And they have. So when I tell you that 2016 is going to be different. I'll tell you that there has been a ramp up to 2016 for many years. That there are those in normal life that are not sitting in rooms like this believing esoteric things that have the equipment of understanding that this time is different. What if I told you that there were those who are being born into this time right now that needed to be born into this time so they would have the difference? What if I told you that there are those that you have loved and lost that needed to be gone so they could come back now? And I've just given you some reasoning, even for my partner's brain, to let him understand that some things are more important than his sorrow. That sometimes the giants of thought and thinking and wisdom must leave early to come back to facilitate what's going to happen. It's confusing if you haven't experienced it. How do you know? How do you know? When you never had it happen. When you come to the, to the, to the brink and you don't know what's next. You just assume you do. I want to tell you a little story about Skipper. <laughs> That's a metaphor. And yet there's reality. Basically, Skipper lived in an entirely different world than you do. Much different. Skipper's reality was not your reality. Different world, different culture, 
different type, different shape. And in this society, in this world that Skipper lived, the biology that Skipper had was different than yours. One of the attributes that Skipper and his kind had in his world was that they knew when they were going to terminate. Imagine knowing just days before it happens that you're leaving. Imagine knowing so much, so clear that you could say goodbye, that you could prepare for the end. And so it happened. Skipper lived his life and it was a good life. And then he got the signal that was in his biology that it was time to go. Skipper did what he knew, what all the others knew, what he intuitively sensed he had to do. He stopped eating. This was part of the trigger of the shutdown of his biology. And everything in Skipper knew that it was the end. There was no suffering. It was normal for this to happen, but it was the end. Now, Skipper didn't really understand what was going on. He knew he was leaving. Now, in his world and in his kind and his type, it may sound strange, but remember, cultures are different. Skipper made his own coffin. It was beautiful. And all his kind did this. But it wasn't of wood. His coffin was soft. It was made of, of cloth, of string, substance and fibers. And he carefully built it, knowing that he would eventually get inside and expire. The end of life as he knew it. Now that's what Skipper knew. That's all he knew. And he was all right with it. Because Skipper didn't know what he didn't know. He climbed into this coffin. He closed it around himself and he expired. Or did he? Come with me to his coffin for a moment, for it didn't last long. The coffin started to move. And then it exploded into color. And Skipper was reborn as a butterfly. <laughs> he didn't know that, did he? Is it life after death or is it life after life? Is it a paradigm that was hidden on purpose? What would he have done if he had known? Would he have even gone through it? Skipper was Skipper, but he was different because now he was beautiful and he could fly. And so are you. A change that is so grand that you don't know it. And it's never happened before. Not to humanity. Not in this way. And there's no guarantee. And we've said this over and over. No guarantee. This planet has free choice to go the way it goes. But the potentials have been put in place by you. In such a way that we can predict it's all going to happen. This is literally the beginning of a society you've never seen in any cycle ever. And it's going to happen slowly and painfully. Because you don't know what's next, do you? I want you to be peaceful in what's taking place, no matter what you see. There are some oddities 
about low energy and higher energy. The low energy cannot see above itself. If a low energy culture or society or human being is exposed to a higher energy culture, it cannot see it. It does not understand it. We even told you the darkness is dysfunctional because of it. We gave you the examples of some of the things that are happening on this planet that are fearful for you. The darkness seems to have arisen suddenly and we've told you about it. It's been predicted. Dear ones, if it's predicted, you can prepare for it. Did you hear that someplace? You can understand it, you can be ready for it, and you don't have to fear it. I want to show you one more time from a human standpoint that is current events how dysfunctional low energy is. How illogical low energy is. And in order to do that, I'm going to give you a piece of information and channeling that I gave you before. But now it's germane to current events. A few years ago, I told you something about North Korea. That when the father died, the son would inherit everything, including the countenance, the army, and the egotism that he had learned from his father. His father was an egotist squared, <laughs> followed around by cameras, so everything he said and everything he did would be documented for some unknown history for his people. He would swell up in pride and say things that didn't mean anything. And then retire thinking he was prophetic. He was dysfunctional. He was like some god of his own creation. And his son was there to watch all of it. We told you this. Watch his son. For he has within him the power to do something remarkable or not. And that the energy would then prevail one way or the other. A son, by the way, who had seen the West and had even had some education in the West, the son, he knew better. Would he follow in his father's footsteps? Would he continue the charade? Would he then be the egotist that his father would be, or could he be an egotist that did something different for his ego, but something that would make a big difference on the planet? There was a juncture of 60 days from the death of his father where he could have made some decisions, and he did. And a few days ago, you see the results of it. You see, as an egotist, as one who wanted to be adored, as one who wanted to have every, every word recorded and passed to history and be the most important person on earth, he inherited that. He was that. And he had a choice. Now listen to me. He may have been an egotist. He may have been a bit dysfunctional in the psychology, but there was still the logic of what he might do next. He could do anything he wanted as the, as the inheritor of supreme, absolute power in his country. He could do anything he wanted. What would the egotist do? What could he do? that would be grander even than his father. 
and it didn't even occur to him. Right then, through the facilitation of the United Nations, he could have pulled it off. He didn't have to join the West, he did not have to capitulate anything. He could say to himself, we are going to change this planet. We are going to create a bridge between the South Koreans and the North Koreans. We could unite family. We can dismiss the nuclear arsenal. We can bring abundance to our people. We can disarm all of the, the, the fear of our country and what we might do instantly. I can be the most important the most important peacekeeper on the planet. They will applaud me at the United Nations. My picture will be on every single magazine. I'll get the Nobel Peace Prize. And he didn't. Because it's dysfunctional. Low energy cannot see things that are higher than itself. You see this? And so he increased the fear. And he went down a path, dear ones, that will be his own destruction, and it may happen sooner than you think. As the pariah of old energy, along with others who have said the same things, a dictator who will enslave his people so he can have more weapons. And dear ones, the earth is not going to agree with that. Because the planet has already decided where it's going. Are there tough times with this? Oh yeah. Is there going to be another war? Perhaps, but it'll be quick. Decisive. And different than you think. Because this planet is headed for something that it can feel. Can't you feel it? There'll be those who hear this, even in this room who hear this and say, I don't understand. Have you looked at the news? Did you realize we have two Muslim countries that just separated? Do you realize the impact of that? Where is Mecca? <laughs> and can all of those who wish to worship at the right time go there now or not? What is that going to do? Think about it. The sides are being drawn and I said they would be. I said there could be no more fence sitting and you're starting to see it now things are coming to a head you can't sit around and do nothing you must take sides and those who don't take the sides will be seen as weak and the sides that you're going to take is that either a high consciousness of what is going on on this planet or the same old same old which is the energy of darkness as always the way it was the cycle is not going to repeat the way it always has this is the message that's planetary what about personal we're going to look at that tomorrow What does the cycle mean to you? What is 2016 going to bring to you that is different than you thought? We said it this morning. What is it that you think that is permanent with you? Simply because all the cycles of life said they were before. What is it that you might have in your body going on physically, health-wise, that you believe has a cycle and you bought into it to the degree that you're so afraid of it it's gonna happen or not I want you to talk to Skipper I want you to see his beauty and as he flies around your head singing his song in his own way He'll say, I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know. I laid down to die. I built my own coffin. And now I'm beautiful. Because I didn't know. This 
is what we predict. Think on these things with beauty, even uncertainty, but understand things are not always as they seem. <laughs> For today. And so it is.